I actually bring in some pictures of me when I was young. I swear I was, I was almost dare I say handsome. <laughs> and puberty just, it was like, like a werewolf. I, I, I changed. Like there was a change. <laughs> You're all a stun. You will do go through the changing at 13. What is the changing? I get superpowers? You're no. a teen wolf. You will be bar mitzvah. You become a man at 13. Well, Sorry, you know what happened? I have something to tell you. I went into a room and I morphed into a Dracula. <laughs> You're going to go through a change. You will change into an ugly man. <laughs> now stop it. From a good-looking child. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Puberty, great. Oh, man. Today, you are 13. You will be an ugly man. Because I was cute. Like, I had a look. I had, like, like that little nick there. I had the shades, and I had, like, girls were really into me, you know? <laughs> I had the hottest girlfriend at 13. I met her when I was 12. This is, I, I'm going to give you the kitchen. This girl was so hot. People were like, I was the man at 12 years old. My, really? Everybody envied you. My first girlfriend, Irene. 12 years old, she was smoking hot, and she loved me, and I loved her. And then I turned 13. And what happened to Irene? She actually showed up at my bar mitzvah. She was vomiting. <laughs> oh, stop. She was like, oh, what? Who's that? She went through the changing. <laughs> I'm dating a monster. <laughs> There was this girl I knew from summer camp. Her name was Lynn. And she was really hot. She was a redhead. And I was like 12. And she I think she had a crush on me. We used to write each other all the time. Yeah. And then I didn't see her. She didn't come back to summer camp. And when I was 14 and had gone through the change. <laughs> Did she recognize you? I, I, I wrote her and I said, I should come visit you. And my, I, you know, I somehow got there. I don't know. I took the train or whatever. And I walked all the way to her house in Bayside. I knocked on her door. I was with a friend. And she didn't know I went through the change. <laughs> she opened the door. She looked at me and she shut her door. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Now stop it. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. That happened to me. Because <laughs> I went through the change. Somebody slammed a door in your face? Yeah. Yeah. She shut the door and wouldn't let me in. Uh, My I God. Whether I, should you. I swear it, Rob. I went through the change. Will go through the change. When you turn 13, you will learn your true identity. No. Yes, all stern men go through the change. When you turn, when you turn 13, you will go through the change, and all stern men go through the change. I've waited 45 years to change back. There's no going back. There's no going back. Oh my God! Every day gets worse. The change. <laughs> I thought I was in the movie Twilight. I'd gone through something. <laughs> <laughs> now you are a stern. Now you are truly a stern. Go out into the world and make your vein. <laughs> what am I? I don't understand. Something's happened to me. I was a happy, popular child. They called me Shades of Blue. <laughs> Who am I now? How will I make friends? Why are all the white people moving away? What have I done? You have gone through the change. <laughs> At least when you go through the change in Twilight, like you hang out with other werewolves and vampires. Right, you get a group. I just hung out with my family. <laughs> will never stop growing. Oh. <laughs> I had a cute little nose. When I was a camp bowman, I'd be in a little speedo, and I had a nice body, and beautiful face, and crew cut, and my face could even handle that. <laughs> you had one time hat short hair. You need to grow your hair long <laughs> to cover your hideousness. I had hair down to my waist. I looked like cousin it. Sometimes I couldn't even see. Like while others were playing games and sports, if I tried to play with the other kids, I couldn't see through my hair. Part the hairs. <laughs> and you will see. Oh my God. Yeah. 
This is your true identity, Howard Stern. You are a beast. A beast of the night. Leave behind your old life. She don't believe me. Go visit Lynn <laughs> in Bayside. She will shut the door in your face. I told you to leave behind your old life. <laughs> you must leave behind everything you knew. Friends, family. Success. But what about my girlfriend, Irene? She will see you and cry. She is part of the past. <laughs> no longer will she be part of your life. <laughs> well, what do you mean? She loves me. <laughs> no. No one loves the monster. <laughs> uh, I think that's what all those movies are based on. It's my life. That's why I'm attracted to those movies. That's why I watch vampire movies. You know, I had a nice life, everything. I got bitten, and then all of a sudden I've changed. I didn't even get anything cool out of it. The moon rose and it was all over. Yeah, at least those guys have superpowers. <laughs> hey, where's my superpowers? I'm changing. I have no superpowers for you. Well, that's why it's a movie. Yeah. You've been bitten by a Jewish bat. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> You've slapped a yarmulke. <laughs> what? People used to mistake you for Goyim. Oh, my now, God. You have not a shake it. <laughs> what? What's everyone talking about? I don't understand. I'm young. That was a bat. I thought it was a filter fish with wings. <laughs> you were bitten by a flying filter fish. <laughs> I'm so happy to me. I was a cute kid. I had friends. You are hideous. Uh, now this is something to be animated. You are a stern. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an animator. I got enough nightmares. No, it was, it was remarkable. I was really, I, I'm going to bring in pictures of me uh, at Camp Bauman on that little train. And I had a crew cut and I had a little tiny nose. Beautiful face. <laughs> crew cut and I had a beautiful face. How many kids can pull that off? Nice physique. Mm-hmm. And then I got bit by that flying to filter fish. <laughs> I was like, oh, what happened to me? My face got long and my nose got big and my teeth got all gnarly. Even your teeth were straight before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> you know, when I became a father, I was so afraid of the change. <laughs> I stood guard over my daughters every night to kill that flying gefilte yeah, fish that attacked me. And they're beautiful that. girls. Beautiful. Oh, my they goodness. went through the change just fine. I was waiting. I could sit there and go, the change is going to happen to them. <laughs> but it didn't, you know. I guess my ex-wife's genes kind of balanced it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. She was yeah. the antidote. She had a great family. Thank God for that. Dad, tell us the story again when you were bit by the flying gefilte fish. <laughs> Would that happen to us? No, no, no. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I lost all my confidence. I couldn't talk in school. I started getting beaten up. Wrong. Everything went yeah. horribly wrong. You will look hideous <laughs> after the change. 13, boom. These boys were nice looking boys, eh? Yeah, they got through it okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, the 10-year-old hasn't got through it yet, but he looks like he's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like, wow, I, I went through the change. The only thing that happened to me, the JDL tried to recruit me. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you should be in the Jewish Defense League. <laughs> You've got a lot There's of... There's one! Get him! You look like the victim of tremendous anti-Semitism. <laughs> uh... <laughs> looks like you've been through the change back and then changed again. Uh, join us. Uh, we've also been bitten. Hmm. Oh, you saw flying to filter fish? Yeah, I'm in a room full of people with baseball bats and guns. <laughs> We're angry with the world because they've been bitten by the filter fish. <laughs> uh, it wasn't easy with this puss. You know, I remember in my career, like, there were television executives who looked at me. You know, they heard me on the radio. I was a phenom. They called me into a meeting. They'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. You didn't think you would have gotten the Ryan Seacrest treatment? No, in Ryan Seacrest. Are you crazy? Uh, Ryan Seacrest. 
Let's make him the host of yeah. American Idol. He, you know what? He had the reverse change. He, was, I saw him being interviewed on this TV show. So mm -hmm. fucking annoying. And he was this fat, disgusting kid. <laughs> and then he turned 13 and he got handsome. And fan. Yeah, I would have loved to have been ugly for 13 years and then handsome the rest of my life. <laughs> that would have been a change yeah. to worth growing into. Yeah. Yeah, I can't stand good looking guys. <laughs> Especially, if, you know, I'm watching this TV show with um, Ryan Seacrest and he's talking about how he loves to be vanilla. Like, you know. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, of course you ass. You weren't bitten. Because look at you. Right. You didn't go through the chain. Yeah, of course you're vanilla. Yeah, I, I, I was hot at seven years old. You don't need to be hot at seven years old. I don't need to be a cute kid. I needed to be hot when I was 13 <laughs> and, and forward. Hey, where's that Ryan Seacrest? Did you guys pull any tape from there? Maybe I can play a little of that. You want to throw up? Oh, here it is. I got it. Oh, the whole first pizza. The whole first oh, pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't Sorry. think Ryan did that either. Sorry, I'm nauseous, That's okay? Not vanilla. The first half of the Ryan Seacrest piece, this is all horse shit. <laughs> He's at a children's hospital. Oh, God, I saw this. Oh, okay. And well, I thought about us. Yeah. You were always trying to pull that off, and they're just going along with yeah. it. Yeah, one time Stone Phillips came to do a big piece on me for the TV show. Um, uh, what was it, Dateline? Dateline. <laughs> It was like a 60 minute trip off. And he's another good looking guy. Stone Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to Gary, look, the best thing I can do here, because things were getting kind of rough. FCC <laughs> was starting to get on my ass. Everything was going downhill, you know? I mean, we, we were in big trouble. I said to Gary, look, here's what we're gonna do. I need to do something fabulous at the front of this piece. When Stone Phillips shows up, get some chick in a wheelchair down here. <laughs> and I'll like uh, counsel her. And tell her things are going to be good, and, and I'll get her out of the chair. Yeah, you were going to have her walk. You were going to yeah. cure her. Well, Stone Phillips showed up, and I had the girl in the wheelchair. <laughs> she comes in. They wheel her in. I start counseling her and talking to her. Stone Phillips is going to He just can see it's all bullshit. <laughs> He's like, you can't cure yeah. anything. Look at you. And then when she got up out of the chair, he was just like, stop the camera. This isn't going to be used, Howard. We know what you're up to. <laughs> But somehow Ryan Seacrest... They, they pulled it up. They followed him everywhere. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, visit kids who are ill. Like, the fuck you. Then why are you doing it on TV? Cunt. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey! Like, all the kids know yeah. him. Hi. He knows all the kids. Hi. Now, I'm a really good guy. In addition How's to it my, going? In addition to my American Idol duties and my radio show duties and my American Top 40 duties and my filling in for Dick Clark duties. Yeah, they are calling him the hardest working man in show business. No, you know what? I'm the hardest working man in show business, and I'll tell you why. Because I actually get on here and do something. <laughs> I'm not happy being vanilla. He has the most appointments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's busy because he's not exhausted from trying to come up funny shit to say to you people. <laughs> That's why he's able to do things for kids. I can't do things for kids. I'm at home obsessing over my career. I'd like to visit a hospital and help somebody. <laughs> no kid wants to see me anyway. Like, oh, is that contagious? <laughs> what? The change. <laughs> Don't bring that consultant here. We don't want here. what he's got. Whatever he's got. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he's been built, bitten by a flying consultant. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Ryan Seacrest. Let's see. Oh, here's where he's happy being vanilla. Don't leave here, JD. <laughs> You got bitten by the same thing I did. <laughs> you went through the chest. You're handsome. I like it. Oh, no, I'm not that handsome. Since you grew a beard, you're handsome. <laughs> there we go. Seacrest is the host of one of the biggest shows in history. The winner. American Idol. Yeah, he's the fucking announcer. Give me a break. It's Ryan Seacrest. And he's also, among other things, the host of a top L.A. morning radio show. Which is horrible. And I can't believe, if I ever meet someone who actually listens to that shit and makes him successful, I'm going to smack him in the head. <laughs> Co-host of cable TV's E! News. Tonight, all done in a smooth... All done off a teleprompter, by the way. He doesn't have to think of anything. Except for maybe the radio show, but he plays a lot of records. He can't possibly be funny on that radio show, right? I don't think he's going for funny. He's yeah. going for vanilla. Right. Cheerfully bland style. Hi, everybody. I'm Ryan Seacrest coming to you from... It is... I have 50 jobs. All of them I do badly. And this woman is showcasing something she describes as cheerfully bland. Yeah. Not my goal to be controversial. So, in a, in a way... And he's talking slow because he doesn't have that much to say. Right. It's not <laughs> my 
go. It's not like he's thinking of anything. Yeah. Or maybe he's thinking really hard. <laughs> There's nothing in there. <laughs> you know? I don't want to entertain people. I just want to read off a teleprompter. Yeah, I get up every day thinking, let's be vanilla. Let's, you know, yeah, there's, that's great. There's, there's no, I have no issue with that. You get up every day Perfect. thinking, let's be vanilla. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Fucking tons of girls and, you know, it's no big deal. I, I don't feel like I've got to push a button today or I've got to create a headline or be controversial. I have no <laughs> problem being considered. I'm really happy doing nothing. <laughs> Nah. But quite frankly, I'm jealous. Doesn't have to, you know, he can go around and he's got time to help sick kids. But listen to him, he's, he's visiting the sick kids. Hi, kids. Hi. I'm it should just be, it wouldn't be great to be like, hi, asshole. <laughs> we have real problems. Get out of here. We want to see our doctor. <laughs> Ryan, hey, what's happening? If you've ever wondered, hi, Julia, what the relentlessly upbeat Ryan Seacrest. Uh, I tried pulling this off. I got. Hosed. Because <laughs> Baba Booey got me someone a little too theatrical in that wheelchair. That's always Gary's Well, it is. You should have auditioned them. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't have tried to heal them. That might have been yeah. a little bit too much. Well, I had a Jesus thing back then. <laughs> with the hair and the whole thing. What's up? Does in his Look how he has nothing to say to the kids. <laughs> Talking down. Hi, kids. Hi, kids. Hey, what's up? I'll tell you what's up. We're dying. <laughs> Asshole. Down time. High five. High five. Here's a clue. High five. There you yeah. go. There you go. There's some the normal kids. They have. Man, this reporter looked like she wanted to blow him. She was so turned on. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we ever see that look, JD? No. <laughs> Never. Never. <laughs> Nobody's Not. begging to blow us. <laughs> Not unless there's money in our hands. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is my luck. I'd be a sick kid. I'm in the hospital. And you get Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, Seacrest. I'm waiting for Al Pacino. I'm waiting for De Niro. I'm waiting for... Oh, oh here's Ryan Seacrest to visit you. Uh, wait a minute. I got three weeks to live, and this is the asshole I'm hanging out with? Shame on you. Thanks. Thanks for being... Thanks for being empathic. And he's building studios in the hospital where the kids can do karaoke. Yeah. A another bland idea. The dream is just like the rest of the kids that, that I've met across the country. What you doing, Rebecca? I think you got a picture. When we met him last month, the busiest man in show business... Now you're going with me? ...was making the rounds at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Yeah, um, I only have a couple of weeks to live, and uh, uh, on my bucket list, the first thing is to be bored to death. <laughs> hanging out with Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> when are you guys going to bring Howard Stern here? <laughs> where he had young patients smiling. Live closer. I'd be like, you know, geez, I saw that movie where Babe Ruth comes and he visits the hospital. Right. I got Ryan Seacrest, who's promising to be boring and vanilla. <laughs> My idol. Singing. I'm ready to go. If you'd like to vote for Shayla, please dial one eight. Well, he's doing his famous line, see? Right, he's, he's doing the bland stuff for them. Right. Hey, kids, watch I'm me American announce. American Idol. I'm a narcissist. I like when sick kids watch me do my announcing from American Idol. <laughs> if you'd like to vote for Shayla. X6 Idols. I mean, that was the real deal. Yes. Thanks, babe. Nice to see you. It's more than a... Yeah. I tried to pull this whole thing off. Oh, too. she's buying it. She's going to say this is more than just, you know, a fluke. Oh, yeah. This is This guy is so real. Yeah. <laughs> What's he worth now? I, you know, oh, God, it's yeah. a lot of money. We should take it away from him. I, I'm, I'm with those people down on Wall Street. Let's take away Ryan Seacrest's money. Make, make him donate it all to Occupy Seacrest. <laughs> yeah, where's that movie? <laughs> yes, sir. We have to talk about the jokes because you are the target of so many comedians. Really? I think just me. <laughs> I don't hear anybody targeting him. Yes. Doesn't bother you? I actually am not bothered at all. No, it rolls right off my back. <laughs> at all. Being the butt. That's because he's a good looking guy. Yeah, I, you can't hurt him. I was good he's looking. He's Teflon. I was good looking until I was 12. I know what that's like. You know? Were you good looking up until like 12 and then puberty hit? Did you have that problem too? I, I can't. I don't even know if I was ever good looking. No, I don't know. You didn't even have. You, I, wait, you're lucky. You're always lucky. <laughs>
<laughs> when I was like 10, I had a great attitude. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I've ever had a great attitude. The world was my oyster. Or something like that. Any jokes? At all. At all. You have to have a sense of humor. Even when it gets prickly, I mean... It, there's... I don't have any sense of humor on some of those jobs you do. So many gay jokes. How did that start? I don't know. I really don't know. I used to wake up every morning and put on tap dancing shoes and tap dance. I was so happy. And then I turned 13. <laughs> Fucking puberty. Don't even bring up puberty. I'm trying to figure out a way to cure people from puberty. <laughs> it's a curse. I guess I've embraced any sort of fodder about fodder. me. Um, Has he embraced any fodder? Like in the Bizarro world? Did you read comic books? There was a Bizarro world. Like it was the opposite of our world. Like you'd be Ryan Seacrest in the Bizarro world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd be banging Julianne Huff. You'd be not good looking and you can't speak in public. And, but you'd be the host of American Idol. But, oh. but you'd be banging just Bizarro Julianne Huff. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? Hey, man. That's life, you know? It's just a roll of the dice, bro. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> I don't care how great your personality is. <laughs> You've done pretty well with your yeah, personality. Yeah, yeah, My personality's not great, let's be honest. Well, the one you display. Yeah. And make a living on. Yeah. At home, I'm miserable. <laughs> you go back. It's like you go back. Yeah. People don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> you revert. Yeah, not even in an Amish kind of way. Just like, you know, I'm non-communicative. Well, it's sort of like, where's that guy? Hey, where's that fun guy on the radio? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How. I, it's you got to put a microphone in front of me to get me to be fun. Don't think you're missing anything not hanging out with me. You should talk to some of the people who hang out with me. <laughs> there is a commitment Seacrest says he's serious about. Yeah, that hot oh God, fucking. What is that horrible music? That's that dancing with the stars yeah. horrible music. It, oh. It's that hot blonde that quit dancing with the stars. What a dummy. She thought that movie was going to be big. The, the remake of... Uh, Footloose. <laughs> but she got another movie. Yeah, good. I hope that bombs, too. His girlfriend, actress and dancer Julianne Huff, who also... Imagine tagging that. That fucker doesn't know what to do with her. <laughs> right? I don't know. What would you do to her? Huh? What would you do uh, to her? Right? Anal? What wouldn't I do to her? Right. Oh, he'd have her... Uh, Spread eagle. Licking his dog. <laughs> hey, come on. Here, eat this dog feces. Uh. <laughs> Julianne, you ever eat dog feces? Uh, no. <laughs> put, put him on some nachos. <laughs> you ever have a dog lick your pussy? Uh, yeah. Put a peanut butter on it. A little, little jelly on your clit. Come on. <laughs> oh, you want to hear some good news? Good. The total domestic take of Footloose so far? Four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to fuck you. It's only 30 million. Yeah, that's not good. No, it's been out a couple weeks. Good. Good. And it's only made six million foreign. Oh, boy. And, uh, <laughs> that's like five people with the price of a ticket these days. <laughs> hey, Steve, you're on the air. Hey, Alan, I want to know what, what the hell is a freaking uh, gefilte fish? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah. All right. well, I know is I'm getting a tattoo of a gefilte fish on my arm today. <laughs> it's a big lumpy, it's a big lumpy fish covered in jelly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Right, Thanks. I, forgot, I forgot, like, uh, it's not just New York listening. I should have known better. <laughs> Rose to fame on a TV talent show, Dancing with the Stars. She's an amazing woman. Yeah, I said. Someone that has completely made me a better person, has helped balance my life. Mm, she could balance any guy's life. Wouldn't take much. That's some tomato, huh? You know what? I I, th she, I think she's like a hardcore Christian, so I don't even know if they've had sex. Oh, oh trust my me. God. I'm just saying. She's had sex. Uh, You're only hoping. I'm not saying. <laughs> she's a hardcore Christian up to a point. Uh, Everyone's a hardcore Christian until they want, until they get horny. I think she has magic underwear. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey. I bet she fucks like a rabbit because she's on Dancing with the Stars, and those dancers are in love with their own bodies and very free with their bodies and love to, like, you know, be looked at, and they're narcissists, and they love to bend and they twist. Are, yeah, they know how yeah. to move. <laughs> Trust me, she's Christian up until you get her in the sack. <laughs> I'm just saying. Then she's a heathen. <laughs> Trust me. 
That one's hot to go. Uh, I just don't see Ryan Seacrest turning her into a heathen. <laughs> no. Yeah, he doesn't know. He, he's not experienced. He <laughs> masturbatory <laughs> fantasies like us. That's the problem. When you date a guy that looks like me, I got fantasies. I built up a, a lifetime of them. So be prepared for lots of fun. Robin, you'd love being in bed with me. I got endless ideas for you. <laughs> I've jerked off and tested every one of them. Lots of storylines. Yeah, it's amazing though when you actually get in bed with a real girl and you start to suggest some of these things. Boy, do they want to run out of the room. <laughs> they hate it. All right, now bend over and let me put a Lincoln log in your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I used to read this book over and over and over again about like a Marquise de Sade type guy who whenever he'd get a chick in a room, like a really hot chick, he'd tie her up and like leaving the room really turned her on and made her full of desire. That's where that came from? Yeah. So then I got a hot chick and I tied her up and she was pissed. Because <laughs> don't you ever do that again, leave the room. I go, no, it's supposed to turn you on. She goes, well, where would you get that idea? In a book that I beat off to my entire life? Oh. So that can get you in trouble. Hey, Howard. Yeah. You didn't tell her anything before? No, no, no. I mean, like, she was up for being tied up, and then she thought I was going to, like, you know, lick ice cream off her or something. But how long did you leave for? About an hour. <laughs> That's crazy. Because she's supposed to fill her with desire. <laughs> well, let me tell you what she said. She said, untie me, and I'm leaving. I don't like you. I desire to leave. Yeah. No, it, it wasn't like an hour. It was, like, maybe, like, 20 minutes. felt like an hour. I tried it. This is three years old, but... Julianne Hough of Dancing with the Stars wants to remain a virgin until marriage, she tells Cosmo Girl. She was, well, she was 19 years old. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he's, unless he's gay. Aren't you know. they living together, Brett? Yeah, I don't think he's gay. I think, you know, you know what? Britney Spears wanted to save herself for the right man. Now look at her. You know, all She didn't even girls. save herself. They know that right. Justin Timberlake tapped that. Yeah, it's all crap. Now, tell, uh, trust me, Gary, I know my customers. This one's good to go. Julianne Huff. She's ready. <laughs> One thing I you know. You take her out of the oven. That's right. <laughs> she's done. Yeah, she's ready to get baked. <laughs> no, she's baked and ready <laughs> to go. Let's see, what else does he have to say? Oh, he's talking about the girlfriend. I guess my life has been all work all the time. <laughs> and I like the first time I'm actually saying to myself, wait, there are going to be units of your week and units of your day that are devoted to a relationship and not just work. No, oh, way to go. Units. Units of your day. <laughs> he is a unit. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a big schedule. Mm -hmm. Want to hear about how he likes to be busy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'd like to be busy too if your job was everybody's, the easiest job. Everybody's giving you fun things to do. Right. Talk to a guy who drives a truck for fucking 10 hours a day. Ask him how he likes being busy. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest will likely be... I actually work hard at my show and actually try to make some content that will make people laugh. So, A, I hate my job, and when I go home, I just want to sit and lay in bed because I'm fucking exhausted. He likes being busy because it's the same thing if you had, you know... Yeah, the Stones like being busy because it's fun. Imagine going to work. Everyone writes everything down you have to say, and all you do is they kind of walk around, and you know, like a big kahuna. <laughs> Smiling well into the future and looking for more, always more. I'm the type of, of individual that loves, that loves to be busy. I, yeah, I think he talks slow because he doesn't have a lot to say. Yeah. Better busy than, than doing one thing at a time. Can you sit still and not do no, anything? I, this is the only time I sat in one place. And you're miserable. Long time. Not miserable. He's got ants in his pants. <laughs> you know, Steve Jobs said some really profound things. Yeah. But Ryan talks all the time, and I don't think he said one thing worth quoting. Yeah, for all that talk, nothing has been profound. <laughs> nothing has been entertaining or contributed to and the betterment of society. And he takes a real long time to say there's nothing. Yeah, it, it, you know. America has voted, or whatever he says. All right, I, I don't want to spend my time talking about this guy. I was, <laughs> I was spending time talking about myself and what happened to me at 13. I had a terrible tragedy. That's why I relate to that guy, the war hero from Dancing with the Stars. What, what happened to his... Yeah, something happened to his face. And look what happened to my face. <laughs> I like him. He's great. Yeah, I like that guy. I'm rooting for that guy. Him and David Arquette. I found out that... Uh...
I have friends who actually know the girl he's engaged to. Yeah. I relate to him. In fact, I sometimes think he's better looking than me, even after all that. In fact, I know he is. Mel, stop it. Now, let's be honest. I'm being honest. Really? You're kind. <laughs> I looked at myself in the mirror this morning. I was like, JR from Dancing with the Stars is better looking stop. than me. Stop. And he had a horrible accident. What's my excuse? He looks like a guy who had an accident. You he don't. does. I don't look like a guy who had an accident. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> A couple of guys around here look like they had an accident. <laughs> a couple of guys look like the other day I was walking with JD and someone came up and said, Thank you for your service. I was doing for my service. But you mean picking clips for the show? Oh no, weren't you in Iraq? Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> a couple of guys went thanked for their service, including me. <laughs> So sorry to see what happened to you over in Iraq. Wait, did you serve in Iraq or Afghanistan? Uh, I was special ops. Drove my Humvee and wasn't uh, prepared for what I saw. Wound up in a pool of landmines. Yeah, I took 50 landmines to the face. <laughs> <laughs> my man. I should go and dance with her and say, yeah, uh, here's a guy who uh, is a vet and took 50 landmines to the face. Howard <laughs> Stern. <laughs> What do I have to do here? Can we go to news or at the break? Or? We can go to news. Yeah? Sure. Super. I can hear what Robin has to say. I didn't play... Tomorrow I will play all the bits. They did. didn't play today. Yeah, they they didn't the play, reason I got into this... They didn't play our bits, but... Yeah, these bits are timely. We worked on it very hard. They called up a place... Uh,